Do you use rope halters for your sheep, goats, or other animals? Today we are going to show you how to make your own rope halter for your livestock. Stay tuned to find out more. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. A little different today. We are indoors and we are going to be showing you how to make one of these. You can make a rope halter in lots of different sizes, depending on if you need to make it for an itty bitty little lamb or a goat kid, or if you need to make something for a cow. So today I am going to show you with a little bit larger rope than I would normally use for a sheep or a goat, because it's going to be a lot easier for you to see it. But the process is exactly the same. Very few items that you need to make this happen. You are going to need a blowtorch. And I know a lot of you are going to say this is overkill, but it really does make the difference. You are going to need a pair of scissors or a knife, a cup of water, and of course, our polypropylene rope can do this with nylon, but for all intents and purposes today, this is what we're going to use. So this is one half inch. This is what I would use for a cow. Uh, you can go a little bit smaller, maybe down to a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch, depending on if you want to use it for a sheep and goat. But again, the process is exactly the same. Now, the first thing that I want to actually do is take out six foot of this rope. So let's make that happen right now with video magic. Okie dokie, so I have cut six feet of rope. Now I don't have a tape measure, you may have noticed. So how in the world do I know what six feet is? Well, simple little trick that you can do. I am exactly six foot tall. From fingertip to fingertip with my arms outstretched, this is approximately six feet. The next problem that we're gonna see is that with these polypropylene ropes, see how the edges are all frayed there? There's gonna be a way to twist this rope to tighten it up, and then there's gonna be another way that you would twist it to loosen it. We wanna tighten it up as much as we can by hand first. Now I've already burned this end. It gets very hard and rigid. That is very, very important because it's gonna add a lot of structure and stability to your halter. But basically what you're gonna do, do this outside. You're gonna take your blowtorch and we're gonna slowly cook this down a little bit. Now, the reason I use the blowtorch is because if I do this, if I do this with a lighter, it just doesn't get hot enough and it doesn't melt enough. So I just dip it into my water as needed. If I needed to cook it a little bit more, I'm gonna to wanna to burn this back quite a ways so the whole end is kind of soft and gooey. But now I've got a nice hard edge on here that is going to be exactly what I need. If you get a piece that's not, see this one, I didn't do it quite as well. I did this on purpose. If you're getting loose ends like that, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get rid of them. All right, perfect. Next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get about a foot. We're gonna wanna take a roughly about a foot of this rope. Now you're gonna have to learn which works best for your animal. Sheep and goats are gonna be a little bit smaller. Cattle are going to be a little bit bigger. What we're going to do is we are going to twist. We're gonna twist enough that we open up a loop inside the rope. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our short edge here and we're gonna run it through the back side of that loop until we get something that looks like this. So this is gonna go across the animal's nose. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna find a spot just below this loop that I went through right here and we're gonna lock this in. So I'm gonna loosen this up again. I'm gonna make another loop and now I'm gonna take the long end of my rope and I'm going to run this through the front side just like that. And I'm gonna pull it all the way through. Once I pull it all the way through, we're gonna get this nice looking loop that looks just like that. So this is essentially the completed nose piece of our halter. So we're gonna do a very similar thing here. Now we need to make a loop on this short end of our nose piece. And the best way to do this is to go ahead and loosen it up, but we're gonna grab a pretty big section of this. We're gonna loosen it up. And as we loosen it up, you're gonna see that we're gonna start to get these kind of loops showing up here, which is exactly what we want. So we want these loops to show up. And as you can see right here, I've got three loops that I formed here in the end, and that's what we want. We wanna line up these loops 
we're actually going to feed our rope through that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the long end of my rope and it's gonna take a little finesse. And sometimes if you wanna go through, you can kind of turn the rope as you go through. So I went through one, I'm going through the second loop, two, we're gonna to try to work our way up the rope. Now I'm gonna go through the third loop. Three, and now I'm just gonna pull this through. Don't worry if the rope is a little twisted, you can spin it out and untwist it as you go. If the rope is curling up on you like that, you can find out which way you need to twist the rope to get that out. In this case, I need to twist it the other way. Okay. Your word of mouth is what keeps us going. If you enjoy our videos, please, please share them with a friend. Make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you join our online forum. If you belong to other online forums, consider telling other people about us as well. We don't market, we don't advertise. You are what keep us going. And if you like our content, please make sure you help us out. Now we've got this set up just like this. Now all you're gonna do is take your long end, bring it up and put it back through the hole that we had originally made. And voila, that is how we make our rope halter. So what is gonna happen now, I can pull some of this slack out just like that. This part is going to go over the head of the animal. This part is going to go over their nose, go up and over their ears. And as you can see, when we pull tight here, this is gonna go down and around the bottom part of their jaw. Very easy, very easy to make, very easy to adjust. It works great. You're gonna save yourself a ton of money. Just take your time. Worst case scenario, if you make it and it doesn't seem to work out for you, you can undo it and make another one. I got this whole roll of 50 foot polypropylene line at my local big box store and I think I paid $10.99 for it. There's no equipment needed. There's no pieces of metal on here. This works really, really well. You can make these as long or as short as you need. I would make them at least six foot long in order to get enough length on here to actually be able to handle a little bit better. This works out great because you can see this little point here is facing away from the face, which is essentially what we want. And again, you know, if you need to make a little one, you can just make a, if you have like a little bitty baby lamb or if you have a little bitty baby goat, you can make yourself one that's even smaller. If you haven't watched our video yet on how to utilize one of these and how to actually halter an animal, make sure that you check it out right here. I am Tim from Lenos Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again, and I look forward to seeing you next time.